Hey, Flips Geometry, how you doing? You ready for another adventure into the world of shapes and proofs and logic? And wow, I am. I hope you are too. We're going to be diving into section 2.7 today using proofs to talk about angles and angles to do proofs. So let's get right into it. The first thing we need to establish is that angle congruence is an equivalence relation, meaning all of the equivalence uh, properties that you know about, the commutative property, the reflexive property, um, the transitive property, those all work with angles. So if we say that angle A is congruent to angle B, then all the things uh, that you know about equal values, equivalent statements, apply to those two angles, okay? You could use them in any statement with an equal sign that you could use some kind of other uh, mathematical entity like a variable or a number, okay? So angles can work that way. So the next idea is the adjacent angle sum theorem that if we have two angles here, angle one and angle three, that are congruent to each other, and angle two and angle four, which are congruent to each other, then uh, the larger angles that they form, one plus two, will be equivalent to three plus four, um, which is a pretty easy thing to picture if this is A and this is A, and this is B and this is B. A plus B equals A plus B, right? And if they're the same thing, then they add up to the same thing. All right, so that's uh, the adjacent angle sum theorem. We'll do plenty of examples with that. And here's one for you right now. Uh, we're going to be looking at these two angles. So angle one is congruent to angle three, and angle two is congruent to angle four. So they're giving us the uh, congruencies here, and they want us to prove that ABC is congruent to PQR. ABC, PQR, okay? So we're proving this theorem right now for you. Let's look at how you would do that. Um, given those statements that we had already, um, I can tell you that if angle 1 is congruent to 3 and 2 is congruent to 4, then the measure of 1 is, is the same, is equal to the measure of 3, and the measure of 2 is equal to the measure of 4. This is just the definition of congruent angles, right? It's the definition of congruency, period. Anytime you have a, a, uh, two objects that are congruent, their measure is the same. That's what congruent means. So it allows us to step into numbers instead of just this looks like that, right? So if I add 1 and 2, and I add 3 and 4, I'll get the same thing because they're, um, all these measures are individually congruent, right? 1 plus 2 is the same as 3 plus 4. And that's the addition property of equality. Now, I can tell you that the measure of 1 plus the measure of 2 is the measure of ABC. 1 plus 2 is ABC. The measure of 3 plus 4 is PQR. PQR, 3 and 4. Okay, and that's the angle addition postulate, which we've had already. Angle addition is just like adding anything else. Um, now I can substitute in. I have that this and this are equal statements, and I have that this equals the larger angle, and this equals the larger angle. So I can go through and substitute or transitive. Both would be the right reason. And I can say that the measure of angle ABC is the same as the measure of angle PQR. And that's substitution or transitive. Either of those are fine. Um, and so, therefore, angle ABC is congruent to PQR, and that's just the definition of congruency. Okay, pretty simple proof. If you need that one more time, go ahead and back to the video and look at it again. Um, the adjacent angle portion theorem of two angles, one in each of two pairs of adjacent angles are congruent, and the larger angle formed are also congruent, then the two angles are congruent. In other words, it's the same thing as the last theorem, but instead of saying that the two smaller parts are congruent, so the sum must be congruent, now I'm saying the sum and one of them, the smaller ones are congruent, so the other smaller one must also be congruent. Let's look at a picture. Um, if this bigger angle and this bigger angle are congruent, we already know that, and if this is congruent to this, then these two must also be congruent, okay? So that's just looking at the same concept, but backwards. A linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides form a straight angle. In other words, I have angle one and angle two. They share this ray, but the other side of the angles form a straight line. In other words, it's two angles, the sum of which is 180 degrees. That's probably a clearer way to say this two angles, the sum of which is 180 degrees. You have a straight line when you stick those two angles together. That's a linear pair, 
Another common term you're going to use a lot in proofs is a vertical pair of angles. And these are angles that are across an intersection from each other, right? A pair of non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So 4 and 5, sorry, 4 and 6, or 3 and 5. Either of these are called vertical angle pairs. And something that you're going to learn about vertical angle pairs is that they're always congruent to each other. Okay, so angle 4 and angle 6 have to be the same, and angle 3 and angle 5 are going to have to be the same. Because if these are straight lines that intersect, they form the same degree of measure on opposite sides of the intersection. Okay. Complementary angles are two angles uh, if their sum is 90 degrees. Angle A and B are complements of each other. Um, 38 degrees and 52 degrees, when you add them together, you get 90 degrees. Okay. So those are complementary angles. They add up to 90. Um, supplementary angles are angles where their sum is 180 degrees. Now, this is the same idea as a linear pair, but the difference is that two angles can be supplements and not be adjacent. So if I were to stick this angle right up next to this angle, then they would be a linear pair. But even though they're not touching, they are still supplements. Okay, so linear pairs are adjacent supplementary angles. And uh, angles that are supplements but not linear pairs are just, this, uh, their measures still add up to 180, but they're not necessarily touching or sharing a ray, okay? That's the difference between supplementary and a linear pair. Now, I often, when I was a student, got supplementary and complementary mixed up because one of them, they add up to 90, one of them, they add up to 180. And here's just a silly little thing that I finally figured out to help me keep them straight because I would frequently write in my, in my proofs Angles such and such and such and such are supplements, and the it should have been that they're complements or the other way around. I remembered that the two angles that add up to 90 are complements because 90 is smaller than 180. And I'm sorry if anybody's offended by this, but it helped my brain. It's usually more complimentary when you tell somebody, oh, you've gotten smaller than when you look at somebody say, you've gotten bigger, <laughs> right? As somebody who has struggled with getting bigger, I can... I can be honest about that. So complementary, smaller, it's, it's the 90 degree measurement as opposed to supplementary is the larger 180 degree measurement. Okay, there you go. Easy way to keep those two straight. So definitions then that are going to help us uh, move forward with this. A linear pair of angles are, are definitely supplementary. And I've said this even when I, when I introduced it a couple moments ago. A linear pair are two angles that are adjacent to each other, the sum of which is 180 degrees. Angles that form a linear pair must be supplementary. Okay, uh, You can't have two lines, or you can't have one line with a ray coming off of it and have the two angles formed not equal 180 degrees. Um, another theorem, if two angles are adjacent and supplementary, then they form a linear pair. So it's going backwards to the same idea. If they are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. If they're adjacent and supplementary, then they are a linear pair, okay? We're just saying the same concept in many different ways as we can. The converse of a theorem is not necessarily true. This is something you need to keep in mind as you're starting to do proofs. Assuming the converse is a, uh, is a common fallacy. So um, you can't say, hey, that if A then B works, well, then that must mean that uh, if B, then A works, or that if not A, then not B works, right? There are some common fallacies here we have to keep in mind. Make sure that you're always going through a demonstrated, proven logical pathway. Okay, one more, th uh, well, not one more. You've got a couple more theorems here. The vertical angle theorem. Vertical angles are always congruent, and I said this when I introduced them later on. You have a straight line and a straight line that intersect. These opposite angles that they form have to be the same. They have to be the same, um, unless the, the line is bendy, in which case it's not a line, right? Three and five must be congruent. Four and six must be congruent. Vertical angle pairs are always, um, are always congruent. So let's prove that. Given angle three and angle five are congruent, prove. Sorry, uh, given that they're vertical, prove that they're congruent. So let's do that. If angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, which is given to us, then um, 4 forms a linear pair with both 3 and 5, right? 
it is what it, you have to add to 3 to get a straight line. It's also what you have to add to 5 to get a straight line. Uh, and that's just the definition of a linear pair. Angle 4 is a supplement of both 3 and 5, and that's just the definition of a supplement. Okay, Linear pairs are supplements. Um, and so if the angle of measure 3 plus measure 4 is 180, and the definition of measure 4 plus, sorry, the sum of measure 4 plus measure 5 is 180, which is the def definition of a supplementary angle set, right? Then I can say that 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 5. That's the transitive property of equality. This statement is equal to 180, and so is this statement. So I can set them equal to each other. And so I can sec uh, subtract out the measure of angle 4 from both sides. That's the additional property of equality. I'm adding negative measure of angle 4 to both sides, subtracting measure of angle 4 from both sides. And I get that measure 3 is equal to measure 5, right? And then if the measures are equal, then they are congruent, and that's the, just the definition of congruency. Okay, so we've proven that idea. Another theorem you're going to need. Supplements of congruent angles are congruent. And we just kind of did that, right? So if two angles are congruent, then an angle that is supplementary to both of those angles is also congruent. We just used that concept in the proof we just did. And so you can see that that is true. A corollary. Um, is a statement that follows almost immediately from another theorem. In other words, if you have this proven, you've also proven this thing. They're a corollary, they're related ideas, and in the logical structure of things, you can just move, excuse me, from one step to the next without needing to do more proof. That being said, since we have this theorem that I just gave you a moment ago, that supplements of congruent angles are congruent, I can move right to its corollary, which is that supplements of the same angle are congruent. So if I have the same angle and I say, hey, this angle is a supplement to the first one and this other angle is a supplement to the first one, then these other two angles must be congruent to each other. Okay, That's a logical step from the theorem that I just had. Here's another theorem. Complements of congruent angles are congruent. Complements of congruent angles are congruent. And so again, I have two angles that are congruent to each other. I have their complements. And so, therefore, the complements of the same thing must be congruent to each other. We're going to do so many examples with this, it will become very clear very soon, right? All right angles are congruent. Well, this makes sense. Every right angle measures 90 degrees exactly, or it wouldn't be a right angle. And so, everything that measures 90 degrees exactly is congruent, because it all has the same measure, okay? Some of these are kind of no dot statements. Congruent supplementary angles are right angles. So, if I have two angles that add up to 180, their supplements, and those two angles are the same measure, then what's the way to get two things to add up to 180 and have them be the same? Well, if they're both 90, 90 plus 90 equals 180. So congruent supplementary angles are right angles. They add up to 90 degrees, or they are 90 degrees. Okay? A lot of theorems in this section, but they're all pretty common sense. If one angle of a linear pair is a right angle, then the other angle is also a right angle. That's the exact same statement, just using some different words, right? You have a linear pair, you have two angles that add up 280 degrees, and they share a common ray. They're a linear pair. And if one of them is 90, then the other one has to also be 90, because they add up 280, and you have 90 plus something equals 180. Well, the other thing that you need to have to get 280 from 90 is another 90, right? So if one angle of a, nine, of a linear pair is, comp, is a right angle, so is the other. Alrighty, that's it. Tons of theorems, but I think they're all kind of common sense, and I hope that you find yourself being successful. Uh, we'll go through lots of examples tomorrow in class. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I.